Okay, so we're going to go ahead and find the inverse uh, of this function and then graph it. And, you know, you're going to have your calculator graph, but I like to talk about how we can do this easily with the fact that we know that this is a parabola that opens up and then where it's going to become a radical function. So kind of have an idea as to what the picture is going to look like. Um, so the first thing that we need to identify or even look at is the fact that this guy has uh, two x's. Uh, in different spots. We got the square and then the linear term and this causes problems when we're attempting to uh, find an inverse of a quadratic. So the first thing that we need to do is complete the square. And so that's the first process that we're going to go through. Uh, before I even do that I'm going to go ahead and add 5 to both sides and get that constant out of the way. Once I get the constant out of the way I can go ahead and complete the square. We complete the square by taking uh, the middle term, dividing it by 2, and squaring it to both sides. Let me add that to both sides. Then I'm going to go ahead and simplify. That is 5 plus 1, and that's equal to x squared minus 2x plus 1. And we have y plus 6 is equal to x minus 1. And we factor it, we get the x minus 1 again. Okay, so the idea here is we went through this completing the square process so we would get two terms that are the same. And now uh, the nice thing about this is I can go ahead and write this as a squared binomial and from here, I can actually now switch my x and y. And so the idea is I'm going to take these two guys and switch spots, and that's how we solve for an inverse. And what I want to do to kind of accentuate that, let me erase this, is we have x plus 6 is equal to y minus 1 quantity squared. And then I'm going to take the square root of both of these guys. And I'm going to start the move that over there. And that's going to equal plus or minus the square root of x plus 6, which is equal to y minus 1. Add 1 to both sides. And we have our inverse function. So now how do we graph this? So the idea for graphing is we're going to go ahead and we're going to look at this guy right here, okay, this 6. This 6 right here is going to be our shift to the right or the left. And, and what we've done in class is we've looked at the fact that we're going to go ahead and um, plot the 0. So I know that the 0 is going to be negative 6. So if I set this guy equal to 0, it's going to be negative 6. So that's going to be my x shift. And just like any other transformation, this guy right here is going to be our y shift, and it's positive 1. So I'm actually going to be able to plot a point at negative 6, positive 1. And because we have a parabola that opens up, that means our inverse is going to also open in a positive direction. And that would be my inverse function. So this guy right here is the graph of my inverse function. And so now, if I wanted to graph 
the parabola. I know it's a parabola that opens up, right? And the other thing that I know is if the inverse function has a vertex at negative 6, 1, the parabola has a vertex at 1, negative 6. I'm going to change colors here. The point switch. And then I just get my general picture. So as I stated before, we're going to go ahead and first complete the square. So if we look at this step, the first step was us completing the square, right? Once we got to that point, we were able to switch our x and y. And then I had my inverse function. Now from the inverse function, I plot the zero or the shift, and I know the parabola opens up, so I know I'm going to open to the right. And then I just switch my coordinates to get the two different vertices for each of the respective graphs. And that's how we get a quadratic and its inverse.